In this video, I'll be setting up Synology's Mail Plus server, which is Synology's advanced mail server package. I'll be configuring Mail Plus like I configured Synology Mail Server, which I covered in an earlier video that I'll link to in the description below. Specifically, the setup will be on a residential internet connection with a dynamic IP address. I'll also be using services from DYNU Systems to forward incoming email and relay outbound email to and from the Synology Mail Plus server I'll be running. Before getting into the setup, I'd like to make clear that running a mail server is complicated. Being able to send and receive email takes a lot of different services to work together to run smoothly. Not to mention that email servers are a target for hackers and spammers. With that said, if you really want to run your own mail server, Synology's mail server options provide a great way to do so. And if you combine the mail server with services provided through a trusted third-party mail server provider like DYNU Systems, you should be able to run a trouble-free and secure email server even from a residential internet connection like I'll be doing in this video. Let's get started with the prerequisites that need to be in place before we can configure Synology Mail Plus Server, and I'll start with the email services that are provided by DYNU Systems. As mentioned earlier, I'll be using DYNU Systems to take advantage of two services that they offer, which are their email store and forward and outbound SMTP relay services. What email store and forward provides is the ability to host an email server on your network, even if your ISP blocks port 25, which is the standard SMTP port that mail servers use to communicate with each other. Emails are received by DYNU Systems then it is forwarded on to your email server, either on port 25 if it isn't being blocked, or a non-standard port like port 26 if you do need to use another port. Email Store and Forward also scans emails for spam and viruses, which is another benefit of the service. For the outbound SMTP relay service, this will be used to relay all outbound emails that are being sent from Mail Plus server through DYNU systems, then to external mail servers. This will help you avoid being blacklisted and having emails not be delivered because your emails will be sent through servers managed by DYNU systems, which will have a better reputation than you would get by using a residential dynamic IP address. If your ISP blocks port 25 outbound, you can use non-standard ports as well to send emails through the outbound SMTP relay. Each of these services costs $9.99 a year, and you can sign up by clicking on the Get Started button on either of their informational pages, or from links on the tutorial pages for each service that we'll be using. I'll link to both the informational and tutorial pages in the description below. You'll then need to enter in the domain name you would like to use, select the service type you would like to sign up for, and click Add to get started. You'll then need to create an account if you don't have one set up already and purchase each of the services. When done, make sure to go through the steps under the tutorial pages for the email store and forward and SMTP up on relay services, including the DKIM wizard. I also go through the setup of the DYNU system services, specifically the SMTP up on relay and DKIM setup in my Synology mail server video as well. So have a look at that video if you need additional setup details. Once you've signed up and configured each service, you'll be able to see the details for each under Control Panel, then Email Services. Here you'll be able to do further setup and test your configuration as needed. When done setting up the DYNU Systems email services, you'll then want to configure the domain you'll be using. In my case, I'll be using a domain hosted with Google Domains, and I'll click on Manage Link to bring up the options for the domain. Here, I'll select the DNS option, and you can see the custom records I created specifically for the Synology mail server setup. This includes a CNAME for mail, MX records that make use of the DYNU systems store and forward service, and SPF and DKIM records through DYNU systems to provide authentication methods to prevent unauthorized emails from being sent 
through the domain being set up. Note that you'll be able to use the MX and SPF records listed here in your setup if you are also using DYNU systems, but the DKIM public key is specific to your setup, so you'll need to enter in the key that was generated through the DKIM wizard you ran through earlier. Google Domains also allows for DDNS, which I've already set up as well, and I'll need the credentials that are listed under Advanced Settings to set up DDNS within DSM, which I'll be working on shortly. For port forwarding, these are the rules that I've set up on my router along with the corresponding firewall rules that are needed in my setup. These rules basically forward the ports for the various email services that I'd like to expose publicly to the corresponding private ports on my Synology NAS running Synology MailPlus server. One exception is that I'm publicly exposing port 26 rather than port 25 on my router, but port forwarding to port 25 internally on my Synology NAS. Port 26 is also what I've configured for the email store and forward service on DYNU systems as well, so that it knows on what port email should be delivered to. I'll also click on the test ETRN host button to make sure the setup is working properly, which it looks like it is. This would be what you would need to do as well if your ISP blocks port 25 inbound on your public IP address. Now from within DSM, I'll install Synology Mail Plus Server as well as Synology Mail Plus from the Packet Center. Once those packages are installed, I'll bring up Control Panel, select User and Group, then create an account that will be used with Synology Mail Plus Server. Next, I'll bring up the External Access Control Panel, select DDNS, and add a DDNS entry using the Google Domain's hostname and credentials I went over earlier. I'll test the connection, which returned a status of normal, so I'll click OK to complete the setup. Now we can get to setting up Synology Mail Plus Server, so I'll launch the application from the main menu, which starts up the setup wizard automatically. I'll be creating a new mail system, so I'll leave things as is and click Next. From this Configure Basic SMTP Settings window, I'll leave the account type set to Local Users. I'll leave the network interface as is. Enter in the domain name and host name I would like to use and leave the volume as is as well. I'll click Next, then Apply on this summary window, then wait for the settings to be applied before I'm able to finish up the setup wizard. Now I'll continue configuring Mail Plus Server and click on the account listing to activate the user that was created earlier using one of the five free licenses that comes with the Synology Mail Plus suite. Next, I'll select Mail Delivery and under General, I'll make sure the options enable SMTP authentication and check if the sender's email addresses belong to the login accounts are enabled. Also, for additional security, make sure neither of the skippable options are enabled. The prohibit plain text authentication over unencrypted connection should be enabled as well. And confirm that the host name that is listed is the correct domain name you would like to use. Under Delivery, I'll enable the option for all mail to be sent through a single relay host. Then I'll switch over to my DYNU Systems control panel, select Email Services, and select my domain name corresponding to the SMTP outbound relay settings to get the information needed to set up the relay host. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to set your SMTP password, which you'll be needing for the setup as well. With that information in hand, I'll switch back over to the Synology Mail Plus server setup and enter in the information that was gathered into the appropriate fields. If you also plan to use port 587 to access the DYNU system's relay host, you should be able to enter in the exact information I'm entering in here other than the account and password, which is specific to your setup. Next, I'll click on the service listing and under protocol, I'll be able to enable or disable the SMTP, IMAP, and POP3 settings. By default, all of the options are enabled and for my setup, I'll leave things as is 
and continue to the auditing listing. Here I'll select report, enable the daily report, and enter in an email address where I would like the report to be sent. This is optional, but I personally find the daily report informative, providing me with highlights of what happened on a given day. Next, I'll select Server Management, then click on the Server List option. I'll then click on Check Settings, which will return a list of settings that the system wants us to look at and are considered important to run a secure mail server. Some settings are already fine, but others have warnings and a message displaying the negative effect that will occur if the setting isn't corrected. What I'll do is go through the steps to resolve the settings that have warnings, and I'll begin with enabling the anti-spam engine by clicking on the security listing, which by default selects the anti-spam option. Here I'll enable the anti-spam engine and click apply. Next, I'll select antivirus, enable the antivirus engine, and click apply to resolve the antivirus warning that was displayed. I'll then click on the authentication listing and enable the DKIM verification on inbound emails and the DMARC options to resolve those issues. Then I'll click on the anti-spam listing once again and enable the post screen protection against spam option to enable DNS blacklist. Now, if I bring up server management, select the server list, and click on check settings once again, we can see that all of the settings are now fine and Synology Mail Plus Server is now set up in a much more secured way. One additional option I like setting up is a daily sending quota, which limits the number of outbound emails that a specific user can send. This option is available under domain where I'll need to select the domain name that I'll be configuring, then click edit. Here I'll select usage limit, then I'll enable the daily sending quota and set it to a number that is appropriate to the number of emails that a user will likely send. This also prevents the mail server from being used for spamming if an account becomes compromised. At this point, Synology Mail Plus Server should be all set, and I'll test to make sure by logging in to DSM with the user account that I've set up with a Synology Mail Plus license. Once logged in, I'll select Synology Mail Plus from the main menu and send a test email out to an external email address that I have. The email was delivered successfully, and I'll reply to confirm that inbound email to my Mail Plus server is working as well. The email was delivered to the Mail Plus user successfully, so it looks like both outgoing and incoming email is working. I also configured Thunderbird as an email client, and it was able to automatically figure out the settings that were needed to properly access my Synology Mail Plus server. I'll again test sending an email out to my external email address, and we can see that the email sent through Thunderbird was delivered successfully as well. Hopefully, if you followed along, you also have a working Mail Plus server on your Synology NAS, and let me know if you do or don't in the comments below. As I mentioned earlier, running an email server can be tricky, and I've tried my best to get you up and running, but if you would like to get further details on running Synology Mail Plus Server, check out the additional resources I've linked to in the description below. You may also want to check out my Synology Mail Server video, which is listed here on screen. Also, if you would like to support my work or hire me to assist you in setting up Synology Mail Plus Server, check out the links either here on screen or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching.